Okay, now we get into a very interesting section, the absence of any grounds of justification, the absence of wrongfulness, okay, absence of wrongfulness. What is wrongfulness? Wrongfulness is, what I said earlier, is that when I'm, when I'm doing something, when I am doing something wrong, I, 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 publish, I publish something that is not, that, that's not true, okay, that is, that is wrongfulness. The person who brings the, the action is always the plaintiff in a civil case. Always. He must prove, that plaintiff must prove the wrongful act of the defendant. In this case, the defamatory statement. We've gone through that. He must also prove that it, that it has infringed uh, on the plaintiff's right to his or her good name or reputation. So the plaintiff has got a lot of work to do. Okay, A lot of work to do. It's not just quickly claim 2, 3, 4 million rand. There's a lot of work to be done. The plaintiff's attorney has got to do that work. And then the wrongful act of the defendant must therefore have resulted in a loss of self-esteem, of respect for the plaintiff. Look at that lady. Doesn't she look depressed? Look how depressed she looks. Okay. So, loss of self-esteem, of respect for the plaintiff. Guys, do you, understand, do you understand this? That the plaintiff has got to prove that there was a wrongful act. Okay. He's got to prove that his good name or reputation was infringed. And he's got to prove that he's got a lot of loss of self-esteem of or, or respect. Okay. There was a lot, he suffered a loss of self-esteem or respect. You, are, you guys understand that? Right, ladies, a very important question, and this you can make an MB there as well. It has been an exam quite a few times. How does a court judge if statements are defamatory? In other words, the judge is sitting there in the front of the court. How is he going to, how is he going to know, or what is, what is going to make him decide that these statements were defamatory? Okay. So what he's going to do is he's going to look at the meaning of the words themselves. Let's go a little bit deeper into that. He does not look at the meaning of the words in isolation. In other words, you know, certain people only look at, there might be a paragraph and they only look at two or three words in there and then they say that's defamation. That's not what a judge does. What he, what, he looks as, what he does is he doesn't look at the words in isolation, but at the context, at the whole context within which these words are used. So he will look at the whole paragraph or the whole uh, um, um, uh, article. Okay, not only certain words in there. Right, so for example, let's look at an example here. If a person says that a certain woman is a mother, that is not defamatory. Okay, however, if this woman is unmarried, the picture changes completely. Okay, it can. Say for argument's sake, uh, um, I say that you're a fox, okay? Which means that you're a, you're, a, you're a nice lady. But if I say you're a sly fox, okay? Changes the meaning completely. You understand? Okay. Also, in this specific example, um, in certain cultures, it is not strange to be a mother if you're not married. In other cultures, it is strange to be a mother if you're not married. So they've got to look at, at which culture you are in and where you come from as well. So um, I whisper to you, she's a mother. Doesn't mean anything. But if I whisper to you, she's a mother, and she's not married, can mean something else to you and to her. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Okay, guys, what a reasonable person would say. Now, the judge... Pretending that you're a judge now, you would, you would look at what a reasonable person would say. So the court will look at whether the reputation of the person concerned has been injured according to a reasonable person with normal intelligence and, and development. Okay, so we have spoken about in previous lectures, we've spoken about the reasonable person test or a reasonable person. What is a reasonable person? I think at that stage uh, we were talking, I was, I was telling you about the, uh, the guy on the Clapham bus. But let's forget about that. We're talking about a fictitious person. Our courts create to measure conduct and gauge what is reasonable. And this person is fictional. Okay, it's not a real person. So yes. fictitious is fictional. Yeah, that's it. He's a fictitious person or he's a fictional person. He's not a real person. It's a person that the court makes up and says that is a reasonable person. 
um, and the court will create the measure of conduct and gauge what is reasonable according to what a reasonable person will do in certain circumstances. Okay, so he's fictional, he's not oversensitive, he's a member of the society and not only a member of a certain group, okay, that is very important, and reaction is dependent on the circumstances of a particular case. Okay, so guys, we can get... Um, when we, when in law, when we look at the reasonable person test, we, we, can, we can look at a reasonable student in the LAWP 211 class. Okay, what will, will that be? Diligent, she's diligent, she studies very hard, she's always in class, she's always listening. Okay, that's what the reasonable LAWP 211 student will do. Okay, so you understand the reality? Bless you. You understand? What the reasonable person test is then? Okay, it's not a real person, it's a fictitious person, which the court use, okay, to measure conduct. Now guys,